Kashmir is no ordinary place and mine is no ordinary life. Terrorism started at the doorstep of my family home in Srinagar in 1989. My father's brother was shot dead in March 1990 and that was a signal to all the Hindus of the valley to leave or else they would be met with the same fate. His younger brother spent his entire life working towards the return of those Kashmiri Pandits to the valley and was the chairperson of the JNK Forum for Peace and Reconciliation. My parents sitting here brought me up in the midst of all of this. In front of this earnest gathering, I must confess, my life is as difficult as interesting and it's definitely not what I predicted. But even at the young age of 23, if I were given a chance, I wouldn't change places with any man in history. I was born to a feudal family, studied to become a businessman. Professionally, I'm a strategy consultant. But my passion lies in international relations, specifically focused on the India-Pakistan issue with Jammu and Kashmir at the helm. By the day, I work towards creating market entry strategies for multinationals to enter emerging markets like India. But by the night, I write for the newspapers, propagating making borders irrelevant. I write research papers on the next steps to peace in Kashmir. I pound the halls of the European and Indian parliaments for conferences. I remain the chairperson of the Rebuild JNK Foundation that I set up during last year's floods in Jammu and Kashmir. I take exhibitions of the finest Kashmiri arts around India, showing them we have more than just the gun. It might seem much too full a plate, but this is the nature of my life. This is my destiny. And as John F. Kennedy once said, I don't shrink from that responsibility. I welcome it. Undivided India was divided into India and Pakistan 67 years ago. Since then, in my lifetime, I've seen terrorist attacks. I've seen grenade blasts. I've seen my best friend lose his father. I've seen cars go up in the air in front of me. I've also heard stories from my grandfather about him going shopping to Rawalpindi, that is now in Pakistan, of my great-grandfather importing the first bag of cement from Bird Cement in Lahore in 1929, of a united life, of a better life. I've dedicated my life towards bringing the people of India and Pakistan together. I know most of you sitting here would be thinking, India and Pakistan together? Yeah, right. Hasn't he seen the past 67 years? Ladies and gentlemen, 67 years is a very short time in history. Look at France and Germany. Look at Brazil and Argentina. I'm a man obsessed, possessed by my cause. So much so that I can't even think of anything else on vacation. I was back home in Jammu two months ago and I was relaxing for a change, reading an old Rudyard Kipling novel and sipping my Kashmiri kehwa, which is a form of Kashmiri tea. And this paper, yellowed with time, fell out to remind me of my strife. It read, I can't drink the water from the river Jhelum because it is mixed with the blood of my brothers. I can't see the sky because it is painted red. The green of my garden has faded. Perhaps it too mourns. The sparrows and cuckoos are silent. Perhaps they too are sad. It was something my grandfather had written just a fortnight after partition. 24th August 1947, it was dated. Partition has been the most wounding trauma of the 20th century and has seared the psyche of four plus generations. Partition has only fostered bitterness, hostility and animosity, feelings that refuse to die down even after 67 years, only strengthening my belief not to make borders between people, but to work towards making borders irrelevant. Like most of you, I was born, bred and brought up on hate against Pakistan. And my feelings about that country and its people changed in a rather interesting place. In a taxi in the UK of all places, the country that divided us. And it's a very interesting story how. My friends and I had just finished dinner at a Pakistani restaurant, Zenith. And we got into a taxi later, and the driver asked us, so where are you from? And I said, from India. And he said, then how do you know Urdu? And I said, but it's Hindi that I'm speaking. 
And he said, no, it's Urdu. And I said that both languages are virtually the same, apart from the script, of course. He was amazed, but not amused. <laughs> Initially, there was a great sense of curiosity in his voice about India, combined with great distrust. But ultimately, in a heartfelt voice, he told me, your grandfather and my grandfather must have been friends. It's the politics that has divided us. We were the same country. We were the same people. He didn't charge me for that cab ride back. I can never forget Ashraf. 10 pounds mean a lot to a university student. <laughs> but in those 10 miles, he not only won my heart, but changed my long form perspective about the people from Pakistan. India and Pakistan have so much in common that the world finds it hard to understand why they are at a perpetual state of confrontation. The dictates of reason, the compulsions of geography, and the influence of international forces require them to stay together. Unfortunately, when countries have inflated egos and emotions are fueled by political rhetoric, logic and common sense tend to take a back seat. It's a sense of commonalities that binds the Indian and Pakistani communities together. And I only realized that when I lived with people from Pakistan. We eat the same food. We, have, we share the same culture, the same clothes, the same systems of arranged marriages, the same family values. We get up and touch our parents' feet. There is so much in common between these two countries. In fact, there was this Pakistani lady at Warwick University who fed the entire Indian community vegetarian Gujarati khana. That puri aloo and butter paneer just tasted like home food. We all sat together humming the tunes of Nusrat Fateh Ali Khan and Rahat Fateh Ali Khan and forgot which country he came from. I think the stars are getting aligned for oneness. In English, we call it destiny. And in Urdu, they say takdeer. Our countries have shared a common history so long that our destinies are inseparable. In fact, history is being created as we speak. And I believe this is the best time in the past 67 years for all of us to shed our stereotypes and misunderstandings. We cannot deny, destroy, or rewrite the past. What happened was destiny. But what has to happen is free will. And I believe the future is in our hands. We together can transform the lives of millions in the region, just as our founding fathers had dreamt. We can redeem our tryst with destiny in full measure. It's taken me time to reach this wisdom. And I'm sure it's going to take the others as well. But I already see missed opportunities. When India took on Pakistan at the Asia Cup, there were 500 Indians and Pakistanis watching that match together. The Indians shouted, Hindustan, Zindabad, while the Pakistanis shouted, Pakistan, Zindabad. And emotions were running high in that lecture theater. But after that cricket match, a picture of Indian and Pakistani supporters titled Erasing Boundaries won a photo contest at Warwick University. Today, this picture finds a place at the Senate House at Warwick. Why can't we see such pictures in our newspapers? Why is the media so rampant with the message of hate? It's missed opportunities like these that made me share my vision of making borders irrelevant with the world. I poured out my heart, and the response I received was phenomenal. Abdul Ghani from Saudi Arabia, a professor there, addressed me as his brother in humanity and shared my views with his class at a lecture at the University of Saudi in the morning. And he said, in the Middle East, they were received with open arms. Sajjad from Azad Kashmir wrote in, saying people like you can not only bring peace to the subcontinent, but to the world. Unfortunately, there are only a few as broad-minded as you at the helm of affairs. Males like his brought tears to my eyes and were very humbling at the same time. Swapnil from Srinagar lamented about not being able to feel and see his family in Lahore for 32 years. It's people like Swapnil who are my inspiration, my motivation, my drive to take this journey forward, to unite them with their families and friends. From that day onwards, I received some rather interesting emails as well from some people who had been under the intelligence scanners and others who had spent years in jail. My friends at university told me to stop writing about such sensitive issues. My father sitting right here put his foot down and he thundered, do hell with bloody Kashmir, India, and Pakistan. You're too precious to us. 
undeterred, I'm here today to share with you my story, my belief, and my vision for the world. Most people ask me, what drives you forward in this potentially dangerous, uncharted territory? My drive is simple. Too many people have died. Too many people have lost too much for me to stop now. And it can happen. In the continent of Europe, bit by bit, borders have been erased from its landscape and the imaginations of the people. Europe is a classic example of a continent whose history is marred by war, bloodshed, and violence. And they have found a way to peacefully coexist. I suggest we start with the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Pull down the LOC. Let the people on both sides of Jammu and Kashmir get together. Then we move this vision forward to India and Pakistan. And let the families like Sajads who were separated reunite. And then we can have this grand vision for the Southeast Asian Free Trade Zone that technically mirrors the European Union. I've shared my heart with you all. I've told you all that I have. I'm left with nothing apart from this shawl and what I'm wearing. I hope the next time you're sitting and having coffee at Starbucks, you're talking about making borders irrelevant. You all can make a difference. The lovely lady in the first row who's wearing a Pakistani suit today in India. The gentleman over there who might think of importing gypsum from Pakistan. All of you people who just look at another country as a rich cultural heritage that you would like to visit. You can all be a part of my mission. You can all make borders irrelevant. You all should talk about the issue because the more we share knowledge on the issue, the more the shared wisdom will grow. And ultimately, it will be this shared wisdom that will allow the necessary changes to happen. A few of you, well, we have a young audience here, so maybe none of you, but you can ask your parents and grandparents and would bother to remember. In the early days after partition, things were very different. There were no passports, there were no visas. You could live in one country and work in another. The first step towards building trust and confidence between the people of India and Pakistan would be allowing them to travel across the borders without visa restrictions. The ability to move, mobilize, and meet across the border would be the first constructive dialogue in the past 67 years between the Indians, the Pakistanis, and the people of Jammu and Kashmir about their common future. In time, they might learn how to live in peace. Who knows? One day, they might even be friends. Till then, I dream of the day I can have breakfast in New Delhi, lunch in Lahore, and dinner in Karachi. That is how my grandparents lived. That is how I want my grandchildren to live. Thank you. Thank you.